Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to try a new technique for me and this is the scrunched up paper technique. <laughs> so a super technical name for it, but I am starting off with a little bit of ink blending. So for today I'm going to use some chip sapphire black soot and vintage photo distress oxide inks. Now this technique is not specific to these inks at all, you could use whatever inks that you have. I'm using the scrapbook.com domed blender foams and I find these really really good for getting a smooth inking. However, for this technique you don't really need a super smooth inking because we are going to add a lot of texture to it. So I am just adding a kind of a base layer I guess of the chipped sapphire and I want it to be a relatively even layer. Now don't get me wrong you could probably just start off with some blue paper or whatever color that you were thinking of and then do a little bit more inking around the edges it's up to you. So once I started using the black soot Distress Oxide Ink. I really like how it darkens up the edges, but I knew I wanted to cut down my piece of paper to be four by five and a quarter inches. So I cut it down and then went back to inking so I got those nice dark edges again. Now I am just taking a little finger dauber and some Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink and adding just a little bit here and there over the page. I'm going to pop away my little uh, blending mat there, that's the replacement mat for the mixed media glass mat from Tim Holtz. I don't own the glass mat at all, I just really like that size and I find it a really efficient uh, little blending mat for me to just pop away and get out whenever I need it. I am drying the Distress Oxide inks which is really important that this is nice and dry and then we are going to scrunch it up as the technique would suggest. Now. I kind of, there was no rhyme or reason to this, however I did make sure that I was being careful not to rip my paper. I don't want to rip my paper, but I do want to get as many big wrinkles and creases in it as possible. So you can see I'm kind of going around and specifically creating creases all over the place. Once you think you have enough, and I guess you could go back and do this several times over, but once you think you have enough, I'm going to flatten it out a little bit, but not completely. You can see there is still a lot of texture to that paper. And now I'm going to take some Versamark sticky embossing ink and gently run it over the top of all of those wrinkles and ridges and we just want to kind of catch the tops of them. This is the reason that the ink needs to be really nice and dry because if it wasn't dry it would just stick everywhere. So I'm going to add some Ranger Gold embossing powder over the top of my piece here and you can see where it has stuck and where the Versamark ink went. If you don't quite like or you want to do some adjusting to where the embossing powder landed, then I just come in with a paintbrush and fix up any little bits that I do or don't want to be there. Obviously this is a nice dry paintbrush so that it just knocks away any of the embossing powder that I think is a little too much. Then I'm going to take my heat gun to it and melt all of that gold embossing powder and this is when I really start to love this technique. I can see where it's coming to life and I really like that shiny gold embossing on top of our blue, black, brown kind of background. So from here I did just want to darken up the colours, uh, the edges a little bit more. So I'm adding a little bit more chip sapphire and of course the... Um, Melted embossing powder will resist any of the ink, so once you've gone over it with a little bit more ink, make sure you come in with just a dry paper towel or a tissue or something and wipe off any of that ink that is sitting on top of the embossing powder. Now because I love this background and I don't want to cover up too much of it, I'm going to create a couple of small elements. I am going to start with this Mod Vases Mask and Stencil from Old New. This is um, a really kind of basic stencil. Now in a previous video on my channel I had shown how to make this vase myself or vase whatever you like to say um, and I had no problems I just freehand drew one however this does make it a lot easier. Now I do know that there is actually a stamp set that goes along with this and a die set however we do not need these. I'm going to use some hickory smoke weathered wood old paper and spiced marmalade to create the colors for our vase. 
And this is where it's really good to kind of build up the colors. I am starting with a little bit of orange and I am using my finger daubers just because I find it really easy when I'm coloring in a nice small stencil like this. And I just want a little bit of each color and I'm just coming over top and kind of layering them up really, a little bit splotchy. And then finally I'm coming in with some vintage photo and I am coming right down the side there to create a nice kind of shadow. So once I take the stencil off, as I said, I'm sure there are coordinating dies that go with this, but this is such an easy shape. All of these are such easy shapes to cut out that uh, that works fine for me. So just the stencil, which is a really cost effective method to use if I don't want to invest in the stamps and dies and things. So here I am just going to cut out some shapes for our foliage. Now because our background is quite uh, intense and colourful, you could just use white paper and it would be absolutely fine. However, just as one little extra step, and because I had it sitting here on my desk, I am going to use the Hero Arts White Satin Pearl Embossing Powder. And as the name suggests, it just creates a white satin pearl paper and if you had some of this in your stash already or some kind of satin or pearl paper then that would work awesome as well but white paper would be fine i am just choosing because this is here and nice and close on my desk that i thought i would add in the extra step so i have just embossed a whole panel of white cardstock using some versamark ink it's a sticky embossing ink which you apply when you are going to uh, emboss something it helps the little embossing powder stick to wherever you need it to go now embossing things can become a little bit frustrating and i have used many many different types of sticky embossing inks and i have come back to time and time again the versamark one which is a little bit more expensive but definitely worth it and it's worth buying the re-inker for it and it should last you a really long time. It can be very frustrating if you're working with um, embossing ink and it's not inky enough or it's not sticky enough and the embossing powder is not sticking to it or it's going places where it shouldn't go. So having a good quality embossing sticky ink is worthwhile in my opinion. So I have just put some double-sided tape on the back of my panel here, quite a little bit more than maybe what I normally would. I have these four corners poking out and this helps me line everything up and it gives me a chance to wiggle it around. Then I press down the middle when I think I've got it directly where I want it to go because that is where the exposed adhesive is in the middle and then I will pull each one of those little tabs and everything is perfectly lined up. Now it's kind of just a matter of putting everything together. For the sentiment here, this little thank you sentiment came joined together, How I however I want to make it two separate words. So I did cut two of the shadow die, which I cut out in vellum, and I was able to just get away with cutting one of the main thank you die and just trimmed it up so that the letters, uh, sorry, the words are now separate. I'm using a really little bit of liquid glue. You don't want to use too much when it comes to vellum. And I will pop that down on one of the shadows and then I will get those other two little pieces there, which together they spell the word you, and I will pop those onto the other one. Now any sentiment, this card could be for any occasion at all, so whatever you need would work. And of course you can change up the background colors, you could also add um, some different embossing colors on top. I did think about using copper, I thought that would have been a really nice touch as well on top of the blue. However, I went with gold in this case. Then to finish off these little sentiments, I'm just finishing off the shadow die and cutting it down so it looks like this is how it was always meant to be, and they are two separate words. My um, face here is too big, so I just cut it down to fit what I need. And then I am going to pop it up on some foam tape. However, I'm making sure to just pop the foam tape around the sides and a little bit at the bottom because I want to be able to stick in my foliage and make sure that I have somewhere for the ends to kind of tuck into. So I'm leaving the middle there nice and free. And then I just have a bit of a play around. I know I always say this, but make sure that you cut up all of your die cuts and things to make them work for you and so that you can get the most out of your dies. So I have cut off lots of the foliage off this one and same with the thank you sentiment die. I cut that up so that it works for me for the project that I'm working on. To adhere down some of the foliage, I'm just using some of the same liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. And I have a video on my channel about how I get it from the jars that I use into the little squeezy bottles, which are my favorite to use. I've used this glue for a long time and have not found anything better. It is a super strong glue, which I love. 
and I'm going to use it to adhere down my sentiment as well just a tiny little bit and then that will go on the side so we are nearly finished but I have one more thing that I want to do however I do really really love the background of this card I really like the kind of shimmery gold here this is exactly what I was going for and it worked out really well I am going to add some glossy accents which creates a nice shiny and a little bit dimensional finish uh, here it does go on really cloudy but it clears as it dries and then in a moment here in some finishing shots you will uh, see it when it's wet and then when it is all finished and dry but that is my card for today thank you so much for joining me let me know what you think in the comments section down below I love reading all of your comments and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. See you then. Bye.